everyone, I'm Marisol Castro, and welcome to The Hero in You, a show that will inspire, touch your heart, and show you that anything is possible. Today, I'll introduce you to a Boston High School student who's about to make it big in the art world, a bunch of bikers with big hearts, an armed services vet who only employs fellow vets, and a summer camp unlike any you've ever seen. Each of us has a unique way of looking at the world, but for some reason or another, we're reluctant to share the things that really make us individuals. Our first story is about a kid who grew up in a bleak Boston neighborhood, but through his artwork, Luis Gonzalez was able to show everyone the brilliant colors that were inside him. Along with his mentor and art teacher, Ari Haubin, this high school senior has inspired an entire neighborhood to believe anything is possible. Life growing up it was hard, it was nothing too easy. Living in Boston or Dorchester is a little rough neighborhood. Half of the people I grew up with, they're in trouble with the law or mixed up in some type of gang related activity. It just, to keep yourself on a straight path, you know, that's what I really was trying to do. When my friend had got arrested, I, you know, realized that my life wasn't going too good, you know, I could be the next one. What am I doing with my life? You know, I. I figured out I had a passion on something I really like doing, art. Drove me to come to school every day, on time. Drove me to do my work, get extra time if I did my work to be in the art class. It was just meant something a lot to me. Therapeutic and wise, a life inspiration, you know? My eyes opened up, you know, when I came down here. Art was a lifesaver for me. My art teaching career started on the last day that they were hiring 14 years ago at the McKinley South End Academy. And this school is like a, it's a 100% special ed school. It's one of the more difficult populations in, um, in Boston and probably in, in Massachusetts as a whole. And I had brought my portfolio and I thought I was applying to be a paraprofessional, which is like an assistant teacher. And the art teacher had just quit and I had my portfolio and so that day I was hired as the new art teacher. It wasn't something that I had planned, it just kind of fell in my lap and now 14 years later, here I am uh, and can't, can't, couldn't imagine really being any myself. Mr. Harvin, he plays as like a good mentor, like as a, a figure I look up to, you know, as in like he showed me ways I could make money the right way, doing art. He showed me that I could have a career with my life. He had potential in me that other people didn't, you know? And he actually believed that if I kept coming down here, he seen um, progress out of me and what I was doing. Lewis was young when he first came into this class, and I think was maybe on a different path than he's on now. And so it was, um, it was about getting him in here and believing that like this was something that he could enjoy. And then like the art actually started. And so now I'm, like it's amazing what the work that he's putting out. He, Help me build my skills up as like a, being a man, as like a, carrying responsibilities, responsibilities and um, understanding the world. How I got involved with the Life Water Project, it was Mr. Harvin, uh, he had came down to me and he had told me he um, had a friend, one of his friends and they was talking about me and showing my art and he gave a little background about me. His friend has felt that it was a good story, you know, a good inspiration to others, I guess, in the world. So he uh, submitted some of my art pieces and uh, they got back to him. It was surprising because I never think that they'll actually get back to him, you know. That was just like, you know, a chance that I'll never have or opportunity. But eventually, my eyes opened up. I was like, he told me, yeah, they actually like your art. They want to put on a ball. I was like, what? It just warm my heart, you know? <laughs> this process started well over a year ago of us submitting work, submitting the story, submitting different work. It might be happening, it might not be happening. And so by the time it actually happened, it was still like, is this happening? So it wasn't really until LifeWater showed up with uh, like their cameras to shoot the, the, the short film for Lewis and brought the bottle that you were like, oh, like this is real. Uh, and then at that point, it was like, this is also amazing. 
The art I had painted on that bottle, it means daydreaming as well as I do most of the time, you know? I daydream about creating pieces and most of the time I'm just dreaming about, you know, art. It's just like creativity that pops up in my mind. It definitely makes you want to look at the bottle. You have to look at it, you have to read it. So it catches the people's eyes. And it's, that's where I want people to, you know, look at me and catch their eyes, you know? It's, that bottle, it's like, it's me. Through this life water experience, and even before that we were spending a lot of time together, I mean, Lewis had kind of finagled his way into multiple extra hours of art a week. But now with this life water, I mean, there's been an addition of like these film shoots, and then also, I mean, we went to LA together, we're going to New York together. I gained from the experience the opportunity to travel the world, you know, get to see new things in life. You know, it's a big step in my life. Art has helped my community as in like, I'm an inspiration to them because they see how it's like, I was a kid that really wasn't successful, you know, really wasn't on the right narrow path. But for him to get his act together, you know, go to school, have a, you know, an art class, have people in here that support you. It was just a good thing that you, I think all types of kids need. So I try to tell people the story about it. Yeah, I'm the artist who did this and they don't believe me. <laughs> I gotta pull out my ID and show them that that's my name right there. Luis considers his art a lifesaver and plans to become a professional artist. He's already sold several of his abstract pieces, so he's well on his way to losing his amateur status and making the leap to the major leagues. While Luis uses a big palette of color, our next artist only uses red, white, and blue. Former Air Force pilot Brian Stortz owns and operates Flags of Valor, a company that exclusively employs veterans to create wooden artwork featuring the American flag. The American flag means a lot to me. My whole family served over 70 years of service. It's about duty and it's about honor and it's about sacrifice and it's about patriotism and just being proud to be an American and I'm honored that I get a, got to create a company that gets to promote patriotism by creating American wall art while doing that with combat veterans. So my military career uh, began in the Army. I was an infantry paratrooper, uh, joined the 82nd Airborne, you know, right after high school, and spent three years doing that, jumping out of planes, and I loved it. And, and my time was up, and, and I decided to, you know, go to college, and I went to college on the scholarship fund from the Army. And 9-11 happened, and like most Americans, I was upset, and so I had a unfinished chapter in my book that I wanted to, you know, close, finally close, that I never served in combat. All, everyone in my family, my brother, my sister, my grandfather, you know, my father all served. So I had grown up as, in an Air Force family and I decided I want to become a pilot. So I, I joined the Air Force uh, and commissioned in 2005. I went to pilot training and then uh, joined the Air Force Special Operations. I deployed nine times uh, and on my ninth deployment I had sustained an injury um, and, and that's kind of that was my last deployment. When I had gotten injured and I was going through rehabilitation, you know, I always wore, an, wore a flag on my shoulder. All of us do when we serve. And, and I, I didn't wear that flag anymore because I didn't wear my uniform during rehabilitation. And so I kind of missed that. You know, I'd had that on my shoulder for 14 years and now I'm not wearing it every day. So I wanted a, you know, an American flag made out of wood. The one that I found was beautiful, it just wasn't made in the United States. And I thought, well, I mean, that upset me as an American. I want to be able to buy American art, something that's created in the United States. So I just started making them myself. All of our guys are veterans. All of our craftsmen are combat veterans, and they bring a lot to the table. They didn't have any prior woodworking experience, but they're all very creative and they're driven. So what I really get out of making these flags and you know working in a team of veterans is the flag means a lot to me and being able to put my heart and soul into making these flags with a team of people who the flag means just as much to them. I fought f for the flag and for the country. I had lost my husband in April and I just found these guys out of the blue and I was missing that feeling of brotherhood, a family, of camaraderie and the flag is 100% that 
that embodiment. And then to realize that there's a company that makes these flags by men who've you know, suffered so much and sacrificed ridiculous amounts that most of us would break. And I was sort of walking around in the days feeling very numb. And I walked in here and it just went away. So the reason I hire veterans is because I am one. I know what motivates them, what motivates me, being very patriotic. Um, what I found was art is very therapeutic. And so I wanted to hire combat veterans for our craftsmen to create the art so they can have an environment they can thrive in. Whether it's the, the military background and what the flag means to them, nobody wants to put their name on a bad product. And there again, I think that might be one of the biggest difference between that and any other job I've ever held. There's a lot of places where people are there just to pick up their paycheck. They go in, they hit their eight, they go home. But here there is a lot of pride in what we're doing. What makes everyone I work with so special is how fast everyone is able to use their skills in the military to learn and adapt to things they might not have had any experience doing before. All right, have a great day, bye. I realized this would be a viable business when I started creating flags and donating them to fallen soldiers' families. And what I found was that it was very philanthropic. It was that feeling you can't buy. This business is spreading American values of what we want our children to be, of what we want to be. We're all patriots at the end of the day. We're all Americans, you know? We say that all the time. We're, we're veterans, we're non-veterans. At the end of the day, we're all Americans. Getting to be an entrepreneur is, is a privilege, but getting to work with America's Finest is an honor. Flags of Valor uses only American-made materials and employs 40 full-time employees, all of whom served in the armed forces and many who were wounded in combat. For his contributions, Brian was honored with the 2019 Small Business of the Year Award. Sir, we salute you. Whenever I think of camp activities, I think of sports, swimming, boating, and singing around the fire. But at the Wallingford Work Camp in Wallingford, Connecticut, local resident Connor Filkins supervises over 400 campers in the activities of hammering, sawing, and painting. By the end of the season, they will have refurbished an entire neighborhood. We're looking to provide home repairs for um, needy people, disabled people, elderly, or um, low financial income, doesn't have to be all three, could just be one of those things. And it's an opportunity to foster some really amazing relationships between our community and people that aren't from our community. Just being able to bring some hope and joy into the lives of the uh, residents that we're working for. Uh, what we gotta do is we gotta support the roof while we pull this out. Ten years ago, our church went on our first mission trip to uh, Hobbs, New Mexico through group mission trips. I really fell in love with uh, the group mission trips um, style and after my first year um, brought back all of the inside knowledge and was like we can definitely do this. This is something that I think our church is ready for and I think our community is ready for and they really proved that we could do this and they were ready for it and they stepped up in a big way. We're working on 54 houses in the Wallingford area all in one week. Um, so there are crews of six people going to each individual house. Um, their projects um, include construction, like building handicap ramps or repairing porches or doing other kinds of home repair kind of construction. The volunteers that have come to work on the projects are from all over the country. Uh, we've got 360 volunteers, 17 churches represented, some from as far away as Michigan and Ontario as well. And they've been an absolute blessing to our community. We're all really happy to have them. Uh, what's the latest time that we can do all those things? On this house, we're, we have a couple projects going on. We're replacing the floorboards on the front porch. We took off the old porch boards. We discovered that some of the joists were um, rotted, so they're gonna replace those before they put the new boards on. They're scraping and painting the entire outside of the house. There's a handicap ramp and the railings on it are very flimsy. And so we're gonna put new railings on the handicap ramp. 
the high one? one? Where was the yeah. other one? We've been looking to have this done for over a year now. Um, this money was tight and uh, we were unable to secure the financing for it. I'm sure I could have hired a private contractor to do this, but um, financially it would have been strapping. Well, I hope that, first of all, that people know there are people that want to do good. Um, and so we um, are real excited to be reaching out and helping. And the youth that are coming in from all over the country um, are just a sign of our future and that our future is filled with people that want to help and it's not all the bad news you hear. This experience uh, means a lot to me. It helps me grow a lot in my faith and it's really nice to come together with all these people that share the common interest. So the impact that I'm hoping it has on the community of Wallingford is um, bringing good news to the community. We live in a world where there's a lot of bad news and bad things going on and this is a really big thing that's a really big positive and you know we're fixing homes in a community. That's great but at the same time we're building relationships. We've got a community of amazing people that are here just brightening our community even even more than it already is. Um, and I think that's that's been our main goal is to bring people together. It doesn't work. Yeah. I think any of the work that's being done will definitely, you know, help our value of our house and, um, you know, certainly make the community better um, through their work. The camp attracts volunteers from all across the country and Canada. Teams of six work together repairing more than 50 houses. Keep up the good work, Connor and crew. Here's another crew who's out roaming the countryside doing really good deeds. Except when you first see them, you'd probably think they're out looking for trouble. These leather-clad burly bikers are members of BACA, or Bikers Against Child Abuse, a motorcycle club dedicated to helping abuse children in any way they can. We're here to take kids that have been abused and neglected turn them around 180 degrees, give them a purpose in life and show them that all adults are not bad. Whatever it is that the kids need to feel safe and comfortable, these men and women will make sure it happens. They're helping a lot of children out there. A lot of children that don't even have parents or they don't know where to turn to. We're centered around one mission and that's empowering abused children. And all the money that we raise goes to the children. If they need school supplies, we take care of that. If a child needs treatment and the mother or father can't afford it, we pay for that bill. And the main thing is, is we show up. Uh, so a lot of times these kids are told things and follow through doesn't happen. That doesn't take place with us. If we say we're gonna be there, we're there. We found out about BACA through a friend of ours, and I made the phone call, which was the best thing we ever did. They came to every single court date, even if I had to go back and back and back and back. They've been a huge support in keeping us safe and comfortable and knowing that if we need anything, they're always there. The way they came, even to my house, all of them together gave my daughter a bike ride and gave her a vest and made her feel part of the family and support is unbelievable. I'll never be able to express the gratitude that I have for them. This is a big commitment. We have jobs like everybody else, but for me it's worth it. I mean, it's so worth it because uh, you, you know, one child is too many to be abused. These kids are scared from what they've gone through and these men and women alleviate that fear. They allow them to be kids again. Seeing the child actually come out of that shell uh, is, is pretty amazing. 
they're my kids. Just as if they were my sons and daughters. I haven't found better help than Baca. All of the Baca members work full-time jobs but give much of their free time to the kids. None of these guys fit the typical biker gang stereotype. I guess they were born to be mild. But that's what being a hero is all about. It's not how you look on the outside, but who you are on the inside that matters most. Anyone can be a hero. Sometimes a helping hand or a sympathetic ear are the only superpowers you'll ever need. I'm Marisol Castro. See you next time. And remember, el verdadero héroe vive dentro de ti. The real hero lives inside you. Until next time.